Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook. We're so glad that you could join us today. Um, as you know, the vegan bundle is going on. And so we are talking to different people who are also contributors to the vegan um, bundle for 2024. And today, I'm excited to have Stephanie Spencer with us. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Um, had Stephanie with us last year. Um, she is um, just a wealth of knowledge. She has a really great program that she has contributed to the vegan bundle this year. And Stephanie is going to tell us all about it. So good to yeah. see you, Stephanie. Yeah, thanks so much, Tammy. It's good to see you again. But um, yeah, I'm glad to be on Nutmeg Notebook again. Um, so I'm Stephanie Spencer. I'm a former cardiac RN of 27 years. I used to run a heart failure clinic, a, a chronic disease management clinic for 17 years. And, um, and that's why I'm so passionate about heart health. Um, and so my contribution to the bundle is my yours old as your arteries course. And um, it's really good. All of my courses are really geared towards regular people that are not currently plant-based and don't know what you're talking about when like if you're a concerned granddaughter or wife or whatever or, or husband. Um, frequently we meet a lot of resistance when we talk to people about plant-based nutrition. And a lot of times it's because we simply people simply don't realize how sick they are or how drastic the benefits that they will get out of a plant-based diet. And so all this week, um, I'm going on, you know, different collaborations with different people. I'm going to be on Chef AJ on Wednesday, I believe. Um, but I'm talking about a different heart health concept, kind of in depth um, on each collaboration. And so if you have someone with like a short attention span that won't sit through a two hour. My, my uh, course is a two hour uh, video of me explaining like everything that you need to know about um, how to prevent a heart attack, how to prevent, treat and reverse heart disease. And um, I come from inside the healthcare system. And when I learned we, my husband developed diabetes and that's how we ended up switching to a plant-based diet. And um, once I learned all this stuff, I just could not believe that we don't know, like I had never heard that you could reverse type two diabetes and 30 years of being in the medical field until I saw a Netflix documentary, you know, what the health with Dr. Neil Bernard. <laughs> and, um, and so I'm very much aware of what the traditional medical field uh, promotes. Okay. Or, or their knowledge base or your average doctor's knowledge base. And, um, this information is all out there in the research, but it doesn't filter down into a clinical practice. And so the problem is most people will, um, I mean, your average adult has uh, an average cholesterol of around 200. And most of us at middle age, we're sitting in a doctor's office, our cholesterol levels high, and then they're going to have the conversation. Like you need to stop eating barbecue, stop eating red meat. They'll say, switch to the chicken, turkey wraps and salmon, and that'll be great and do low fat dairy. And, and then, you know, you'll try that and it won't really do much to lower your cholesterol. And then guess what? They're going to recommend a statin. And, um, so I talk about that in my course too. Um, and there, and there are different recommendations, um, based on if you've had a heart attack or not had a heart attack yet. Um, and so for those of you that haven't had your heart attack yet, um, this is who I'm trying to reach, but yeah, do you want me to go ahead and do my little spiel about uh, my, are you a border collie or a rabbit today? Or do you want yeah, to, I think why don't you really interesting. And I also wanted to say that I did go online and I, um, you know, looked at your class. It's very comprehensive. Um, I think it'll be a wonderful place for um, people to start. And, you know, most people aren't going to make a big change like you and I have, unless they have a, a serious health crisis come about. Mm -hmm. um, I interviewed Dr. Barnard earlier this week. I had him um, on our YouTube show and he was talking about statins and how, unfortunately, because there is the option to go on a statin and they don't really reduce your cholesterol significantly, mm -hmm. but people think, well, I've, I've taken that medication. So I don't really have to worry about how I eat. I saw that in my own parents, both yeah. got put on statins, continued to eat the red meat, the ice cream, the, you know, all the fatty mm -hmm. foods, because 
they they feel like, well, I've got that pill. So, right. you know, that's going to protect and, me. Right. And the, and the issue with statins is that, uh, and I talked about this yesterday with Vicki Brett Gock, and I'm going to talk about, uh, but I talked about inflammation. Uh, a lot of the problem is inflammation too, the inflammation of the lining of our arteries. And, you know, statins will turn off your liver's ability to make cholesterol. So it will lower your cholesterol, but it doesn't address like our cultural norm is to give people statins and then they continue to eat inflammatory food that is high in cholesterol. I mean, it, the difference between chicken and red meat isn't that much as far as fat go. content, you're still getting lots of cholesterol and, uh, and those LDL particles, but, um, but with a whole food plant-based diet, we eliminate the dietary cholesterol. And then we're also addressing the inflammation and we're rebuilding our endothelial lining with like green leafy green vegetables and stuff. So we're addressing it from all these different angles, but yeah, like there's been a study, um, uh, individuals that did get their cholesterol below 150 with a statin and 25% of them still had major cardiac events because they weren't addressing the inflammation. But with the Esselstyn diet, uh, CRP levels, a, a, a inflammatory marker reached uh, back, went dropped down to normal levels. I think it was within like two to three weeks. So um, that's what a lot of it is. Yeah, that's-, that's Which also um, shows you how important it is to adhere to that diet because you can have that improvement mm -hmm in two to three weeks, which also means if you decide to go back to the way you were eating within two or three weeks, then you can be right back having right. issues again and have another right. health crisis, you know, right. but it, there's yeah. such a big disconnect between the correlation of how we eat, the lifestyle choices we make and mm -hmm. what's happening with us internally. There's just this huge disconnect, but not just with the general public, also with our medical professionals. That had to yeah. have been so frustrating for you when yeah. you were working with cardiac patients, knowing what you know. No, well, so actually I left, the, I left the, yeah, like I didn't really know this stuff back when I was working and like at some point I just got kind of fed up and I started a microgreens business, believe it or not. And, and so I've been doing that for the last five years, but it was like right about the same time I started my microgreens business that Paul, like ironically comes home with the diabetes. And then I like just fell down the rabbit hole. So yeah, I, I was never, I never had this knowledge while I was in the medical field, like working directly directly with patients, but, um, but I know exactly what we don't know. And I still get referrals from physicians these days and like, I'll talk to them and I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I used to think too. <laughs> like we think inflammation comes from like an infection or the flu, but like, no, it comes from food, but yeah. So, but yeah, you want me to dive into my little, yes, my little let's, presentation let's today? Yeah, so what it is, is are you a border collie or a rabbit when it comes to your coronary arteries. And, you know, of course, uh, the diehard Nutmeg Notebook fans, I am preaching to the choir here, but there's plenty of people that really do believe that they are carnivores and really need to eat meat. And so it's important important to understand that we evolved from amoebas to our present form, talking on a Zoom right now, over about 25 million years, right? But it was only in the last 2 million years that we evolved to the hominid form, meaning uh, walking upright, okay? So for the first 23 million years of our evolution, we were great apes, and apes eat about 95% plants. Apparently, I guess they do eat some animals, but that's just 5%. So for the vast majority of our evolutionary history, cholesterol was almost absent from our diet. So our bodies evolved to hold on to cholesterol. If we ever got cholesterol, like we need it for cellular structure and stuff. So our bodies are like, oh my gosh, we've got to hold on to that and store it. Right. Um, so in like in our hunter gatherer, or like, you know, like the last 2 million years, we ate probably about 10 to 15% of our calories from fat. Okay. Um, if we're foraging or even wild game is about 15% fat and we had massive amounts of fiber. And then about 10,000 years ago, we developed animal husbandry. Right. And so, and, and agriculture, right. So we started making hoes and like <laughs> planting seeds in the ground and, and we started fencing in animals. And so then we did start getting 
more fat then, but maybe it was about 20%, right? But then we, you know, over time, our agricultural system evolved. We industrialized our agricultural system probably like around the 1850s after we got the railroads. You know, we didn't have to slaughter our own cow to get meat. We could buy it from, you know, a butcher or like we had stockyards and stuff like that. And then of course, like our present day from, uh, I'd say in my lifetime, the last 40 to 50 years, our agricultural system has just exploded in the amount of like hyper processed ability that it has. And so our fat content has also exploded and we frequently eat, you know, 30% of our um, caloric intake is fat. And that is a healthy diet. The American, like the heart healthy diet recommended by the American Heart Association with, um, you know, salmon and your chicken, that's going to be about 30% fat. The American Diabetes Association diet is about 30% fat. And that's what we recommend. But heart disease and diabetes are actually diseases of fat toxicity. And so they respond rapidly if we decrease our fat intake down to the level that was common with our evolutionary history, which is about 10 to 15%. Okay. But, um, and, and like, what's the popular diet these days, the keto diet with, with yeah. which is high fat and low carbs, but we evolved eating mostly carbs. Right. And so over time, when we go from, you know, hunter gatherer to having an app on our phone where we push a button and have a pepperoni pizza, that's 80% fat delivered to our door. We're going to have a few problems because the human body physiologically, biologically evolves very slowly. It'll take hundreds of thousands of years, at least for us to evolve to the point where it's normal to eat pizza and it's normal to eat meat three times a day. Even a mountain lion doesn't eat meat three times a day like we do. Okay. So, um, so yeah, of course the humans wanted to come up with a solution to the not tolerating pepperoni pizza very well because it's so yummy and it's so cheap. Right. So we, what we do in our, in medical culture, we assume that the food that we eat is normal food. And so there must be something wrong. It must be wrong. If you, if your arteries fill up. So clearly we need to address that by coming up with pills. And so that's what we did was develop statins. So which animal do you think that researchers studied to find a comparable model as far as the arteries go to humans, right? So if you get a dog, like our little border collie there, if you feed a dog 30 egg yolks a day, <laughs> you cannot even induce coronary artery disease in a dog. You, you could, researchers tried everything. They cannot get those arteries to fill up because dogs are carnivores and they evolved over millions of years eating meat and they efficiently rid themselves of cholesterol. They have short bowels. They don't have colon cancer from eating all the meat they eat. My dog just like <laughs> drops a, <laughs> you know, like whatever she needs to use the bathroom. It is no problem, no strain, right? Uh, so because it's a carnivore, but if we want to replicate human arteries that fill up with cholesterol, which animal do they use? They use rabbits. Rabbits can only tolerate, if you give a rabbit two grams of cholesterol, its arteries will just fill right up. And so they use rabbits in all of the studies to develop statin drugs because rabbits have arteries that are similar to humans, right? Because rabbits also evolved in like a herbivorous apart, uh, environment. So um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty crazy, but... Um, that's our problem is that we just assume that the amount of animal protein that we eat in our culture is normal because it's just culturally normal to us, but it's not normal given our evolutionary history. And that's what the whole problem is. And so with a whole food plant-based diet, what we're doing, like with the 2024 vegan health bundle, all of this food is no oil, whole food, plant-based, no oil. And if we eliminate the oil, that eliminates a lot of the, the processedness of our food. And so that kind of dietary pattern is able to replicate the food in our evolutionary history, right? But it's more exciting than foraging for roots and berries and whatever we used to eat a hundred thousand years ago. I don't even really know, but you can get Tommy and Tams, Tommy and Tam, Tam, that's Tammy what Chef and Tom's. AJ, that's what Chef AJ calls it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Tammy and Tom's, what is it? Cooking for company or whole food plant-based for company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but that's the whole idea. That's why there's 8,000 contributors here. That's why this is so popular is because we get such drastic results in improving our health, but you know, like I'm not a chef, I'm an RN, right? But I can follow recipes. <laughs> and so like, as soon as I discovered this, I've been plant-based for five years now, but um, that was the first, I'm like, oh, like once I grasped, like you need to eliminate the oil, you want to keep your fat level, you know, like at this amount to just have drastic results. And then like your body just comes back to life, you know, cholesterol levels drop, uh, uh, insulin resistance will resolve. Um, it, but so the answer is like, well, what can we eat? And we have just all these amazing chefs that have come up with novel things. Like you can make a lasagna out of tofu. That's my latest kick. And I have like tweaked my tofu recipe to like have, make it taste like cheese. You can use miso or like all sorts of things. Um, you know, there's just so, so anyway, Tammy, this would be a great time for you to tell us what exciting things that you have that will also help uh, people resume their uh, natural evolutionary dietary pattern. Okay, yeah, absolutely great. And I, I loved your presentation, very informative and so spot on. And Tom and I actually have some friends here locally that are in their 80s who reversed their heart disease. Um, one of our friends was a cardiac cripple and he was told, you know, there isn't anything more um, we can do for you. His cardiologist had given up and then he learned about a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Wow. I taught him how to use an instant pot and he actually reversed his heart disease. He couldn't walk from his garage door to the end of the driveway to mm -hmm. put the trash out. He had a chairlift in his home because he could no longer do the stairs. And he has, wow. you know, taken the $10,000 chairlift out of his house. Oh he rides a bicycle with a bike group several times a week. I mean, oh my he gosh. Is just, I know it. Six years ago, yeah, it was, it right was, diet. yeah, it was six years ago and he is like thriving now. And so, wow. and I do have, um, I have a couple of interviews on my YouTube channel with him. We did a radio show together. Um, where oh he shared gosh. his story. I mean, it's magnificent. And Kaiser has even had him come and speak at Kaiser to cardiologists to tell them, yeah. you know, what he did. And, um, and he followed wow. Dr. Esselstyn's plan mm -hmm. to the letter. And, um, you know, so we've seen it happen in real life to our friends and, mm -hmm. you know, not only heart disease, but diabetes, type two diabetes, mm -hmm. you know, chronic knee pain, arthritis. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on. And the wonderful thing about this mm -hmm. is that it's the same diet that helps all of those conditions. It is getting rid of the animal products and eating plants, having a um, plants be the absolute center of your diet. And then also staying active mentally, physically, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's everything together. So uh, Tom and I have been whole food plant-based since 2013. It, we're actually celebrating 11 years this month of wow. being um, plant-based. And I loved to cook before I adopted this lifestyle. So I was able to, you know, take family recipes and convert them to be plant-based. And um, I remember though, the first year that we were plant-based, those first holidays, those first yeah. times entertaining people who don't eat like we do. And I just, I lost sleep over like, what am I gonna make that they're gonna mm -hmm. eat, that they're gonna think is, is going to be good. And so that's why um, we did this book. Um, this is a, a wonderful, guide for everyone, um, easy plant-based entertaining, cooking for company. What we've done is we've put together 10 comprehensive menus. So from beginning to end, you've got, you know, dessert, everything is in there, what to make for 10 different occasions. These are tried and true. These are the recipes that I use for my family, my friends, people who don't eat like we do. I have a lasagna recipe in here that my mom made um, and had my brothers over. My brothers are all big meat eaters. They live in the Midwest. They didn't even know it didn't have meat. You know, 
they, they <laughs> like, they ate it and thought it was great. Um, and wow. so, and that's part of it is that, you know, if you tell somebody it's plant-based, um, immediately, if they don't eat like us, they start to think cardboard, you know, this isn't mm -hmm. going to taste good. So um, if we don't tell them and just let them right. experience the food. So along with the menus, for every menu, I give you a plan. I tell you what can be made in advance, what can be made and frozen. So it'll take the pressure off that day because we're making almost everything we eat from scratch. You talked about mm -hmm. the, the tofu ricotta. You know, we go to an effort to make that taste really delicious. We make our own marinara so that it doesn't have salt, oil, and sugar in it. And so in here, I give you a plan as well, how to, to um, strategize so that you're not having to cook for six hours on the day that you're having company over. I have one menu in here that once you do a little bit of chopping and prepping, it takes one hour, one hour to yeah. put it all together. And it's like one of my go-tos. Um, we find that ethnic food is really easy to make for um, people who don't yeah. eat like it, us. So I have a Greek menu in here with falafel that's made without oil and nobody oh, expects yeah. their falafel to have any meat, right? right? So it's right. falafel and hummus in a tabbouleh salad. So all of these recipes are SOS free, which stands for salt, oil, and sugar free. And because I have a gluten sensitivity, they are all also gluten free, but they're delicious. Yeah. These are the recipes that my family and friends who don't eat like me say, can I have that recipe? You know? And so, um, and we have, you know, uh, full color pictures. I'll just show you here. We show you what the, what the menu looks like, what the food is going to look like. And then um, all of the recipes are in here. Everything is hyperlinked. And so when you're looking at this menu, you, we have the recipes listed and they're hyperlinked because you're getting this as a PDF. And so you just click on it. It takes you right to the recipe. And so um, we're just super proud of this. And so many people over yeah. the years have asked me, like, I really, you know, like, what would I put with your lasagna to make that a meal? Mm -hmm. And so I also give some hints and tips on when you're entertaining and cooking for people who don't eat like us. Um, I do, like, I will go buy really delicious bakery bread that, you know, sourdough that doesn't have any right. oil in it and mm -hmm. heat that up and slice it because you know, that's a comfort food. That's something comfortable that they're used mm -hmm. to, um, you know, because my family doesn't need to eat gluten-free. If I'm doing a Mexican meal for them, Tom and I will make our own oil-free air, um, air fried chips in our air fryer, but I will go ahead and buy, I'll, I get the ones that have the least amount of oil in them for my family yeah. and friends, because that's going to make them like everything else that I right. serve them. And so, so, so what happens is <laughs> yes. us rabbit people yes. are able to enjoy our food just as we like it. And mm -hmm. our border collie relatives and friends, they don't know the difference because it's all good food. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's one thing that we say, you know, good food is good food. Ours just happens to be healthy and vegan. But, um, and I've got some things here um, to show you as well. Also, I want to mm -hmm. say uh, for people who don't know, how to cook, which we have found that a lot of people who adopt this lifestyle later in life because of a health crisis, they have relied on eating out mm -hmm. prepared foods, um, frozen entrees. They've never actually learned how to cook what we would call real food. Yeah. And so if I have videos for any of the recipes in here, we also have links to those. And if somebody decides to print it like we did, then we also have a QR code. Nice. And so yeah. you just put your phone over that, your camera, and then it gives you the link. And that takes you to my blog post um, where I have uh, the um, videos embedded. So, and I'm a very detailed person. So I'm known for long format videos. And so yeah. I, I go through every little step and walk you through it so that you can you can make everything in here um, simple and easy and it's all delicious. Oh, you wanna show that, that's great. Tom's gonna um, do a screen share here. Oh, and excellent, here, yeah. Yes, so here is Stephanie's contribution. Yep. 
to the bundle. And so you will want to find that. You will want to um, click on that and download her PDF and read her PDF. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's yeah, a I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you real quick what the course includes. Yeah. It's so it starts off with my, where do you get your protein class? So this course is great for beginners, skeptics, like they're not too sure about this. They think you're nuts. You know, you've discovered this on the internet. It's not real. I'm board certified in lifestyle medicine. This is the medical specialty group that is dedicated to reversing chronic disease. And so this is all research-based. So um, I start out like there's a pathway with like, you know, pantry list, like how you get started on a plant-based diet, even references for your family physician that is not plant-based. You could just print off a sheet and it's everything they need to know about plant-based nutrition from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, including a free 5.5 hour continuing medic medical education course for them um, about plant-based nutrition and lifestyle medicine. And then um, once we get into the you're as old as your arteries course, um, I start at the beginning, like, and I just discuss every different aspect of, um, of heart disease. And if you follow me, like in the show notes, we'll it'll have on my socials, but every single live that I'm doing this week or collaborations, some of them are on Instagram, some of them are on YouTube, um, but I'm going to be discussing a different concept that I have in my course about heart disease. So we're going to like on Chef AJ, I'm going to talk about how rapidly a heart attack can happen based on the research. Um, and we're going to talk about like what those arteries look like on the autopsy after a heart attack. Um, we're going to be talking about, um, like I said, the inflammation, uh, the clog, the myth of the clogged pipe. Is it really just clogged pipes that cause the heart attacks? And so once people, like, once you go through my class, you will become disabused of the notion that chicken and salmon are going to be just fine. And you just need to keep your cholesterol at 200, uh, with a statin. Okay. It, it's very clear that like heart disease is still the number one cause of death. We haven't made any progress in keeping people heart attack proof. In fact, there's this, this is one of my favorite studies. There was a study done on 65,000 hospitalized patients that had just had a heart attack. Okay. And every time you have a heart attack and you're in the hospital, we're going to do a lipid panel on you about cholesterol level. And, you know, our traditional recommendation is, you know, like keep the total cholesterol under 200 LDL around 110. Well, guess what percentage of these 65,000 heart attack patients had their cholesterol within the recommended levels? 75% of them were already compliant with the levels that we recommend and they still had a heart attack. So <laughs> keeping your cholesterol around uh, below 200 is the recommendation recommendation in the country in which the number one cause of death is heart disease. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I'm going to talk about like in the course, the different, the, the different numbers that we have and where we got our numbers and guess what the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, every time they update their guidelines, they move closer and closer to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And now they do recommend the same numbers that we do as their optimal levels, like an optimal level is it's not possible to have a heart attack, right? But we just don't live in a culture where we think it's possible to not have a heart attack. And so we just do like the, you know, Disney dad level uh, of recommendation where you're probably still going to have a heart attack, but you know, like, oh, well. So, um, so yeah, you're going to learn a whole lot about that. I talked about no oil, uh, you're going to have social media resources, uh, recipes, uh, cooking techniques, but it's really great for if you have a loved one that just is not buying this. I have worked with real people that are very sick my entire adult life. I'm not used to talking to a plant-based audience. I'm used to talking to regular people that are eating, you know, chicken fried steak and sausage biscuits for breakfast. That was always my nemesis. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I recommend that I recommend that you buy the bundle. It's, it's an excellent deal. So 150 contributions, right? $8,000 worth of products. I mean, that's insane. And when you, when you scroll through it, it's $8,000 and a lot, I just was going through it today. A lot of the contributions, like they're, they have the dollar value. A lot of these are like, it's a $20. That's what, what they normally charge is $20. It's not like there's a bunch of courses that are $800 courses. It's, it's 
hundreds of $20 courses, you know, and so lots it's, of amazing, and lots of amazing things. And like you said, it's not all recipes, although you do include some recipes in your program, your right. program is really about education and right. learning how to reverse your heart disease or your loved one's heart disease. So um, there's, if this is a tremendous value, it is available only for 10 days. So March 10th, at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, this goes away and we never will have this content available in a bundle again. Not this same. Every year we contribute and we contribute something new to it so that it's always new material and fresh things. There will be lots of recipes. There are exercise courses. There's a lot of medical professionals like Stephanie who have contributed to it. Um, several doctors have contributed. Dr. McDougall has mm -hmm. a three video um, program about gut health in it. Dr. Um, Furman has a course in it. I And it includes recipes. And I made a tofu scramble out of there um, yesterday and it was delicious. So um, there's exercise um, there's how to organize your house. Yeah. I mean, just it's a wide variety of things. There's also some raw food. I'm not a raw food person, but there's a lot of raw food cookbooks in it too. And I happen to absolutely love their salads, their smoothies, their salad dressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're just amazing. Uh, Lissa has her handheld um, salad book. I actually had bought that her program last year and have been making those and they're you spent more than the bundle yeah. on it. I okay. spent yeah, I spent probably more than the bundle cost on that yeah. one course. But um I highly recommend getting that. I'm gluten free. I have missed being able to have a wrap or a sandwich because most gluten free wraps that you can buy have oil in them. And um so I've been making hers for months now and absolutely love oh, them. Um yeah. We also have something um, new in this bundle this year too, and that is the contributors spring cookbook. And so um, they asked for contributions of recipes, hopefully that we didn't have published any place yet. And um, like I have a, a wonderful tangy um, potato pea salad that's in there that I'm getting ready to make later today um, that I have never shared that recipe before. And I made these um, scuffins. This was a recipe out of that. And um, these are a cross oh, like between, delicious. yeah, they're so delicious. These are a cross between a um, muffin top and a scone and oh. um, all whole food plant ma based made with oats, um, the, a little bit of maple syrup in there. If you don't use maple syrup, you could use date syrup instead mm -hmm. and then fresh um, blueberries. And these are so delicious. And this was in the, um, the spring collaboration cookbook. And then um, I also made, and I can't remember which cookbook this was, Sweet Something it was called. These are pumpkin pancakes. I made these yesterday oh, for, yeah. for my grandkids. I know my blueberries are blowing, are rolling off. I made these yesterday. We had our three grandkids here uh, and I made the, these for lunch. They absolutely love pancakes. And then I served them with a little bit of plant-based yogurt. Um, the Kite Hill yogurt is a very clean um, yogurt that you can buy if you don't have time to make yogurt yourself. And it's made with almonds. And then I drizzled that over it with a little bit of date syrup and some um, cinnamon and absolutely delicious. So, I mean, we can have all the things that we used to love. We just learn how to make them in a mm -hmm. different way. And then these oh. are a special recipe. I know you've got to make these. Are those the Goodman shoes? These are the Goodman shoes. <laughs> so All right. these, these are absolutely delicious. This is a bonus oh, recipe gosh. that Chef AJ contributed. Now she moved close to Tom and I. And so yeah. we've been eating these for months because she was recipe testing. And so every time she would recipe oh test, um, we would get some of these. And wow. so um, these are absolutely incredible. My grandkids went crazy for these yesterday they taste like a candy bar but they're it's simple um you know it's dates they're completely sweetened with dates yeah. you make your own milk chocolate i made it you know with unsweetened chocolate and soy milk 
Um, and so you're making your own chocolate coating and these are incredible. So you can, all of this, you could feed to anybody, no, no matter what kind right. of eating lifestyle they've chosen, they would never know that these are healthy and that they're plant-based um, because they're mm -hmm. just, they're delicious. Our food is absolutely delicious. You don't need fat and sugar and salt to make food taste good. And so if you're struggling with your plant-based lifestyle, if you're new to this, or you've been doing it for a while and you're just in a rut, this bundle is perfect for that mm -hmm. because you will get new inspiration. You will see new recipes. You know, the weather is changing. And with that, mm -hmm. you know, we go from eating those heavier um, winter comfort foods to having lighter fare in the spring. And there's just a ton of wonderful, delicious salad recipes and um, lots of ethnic food um, cookbooks in, in the bundle as well. So in the, um, in the notes under the video, we'll include, um, a link to the bundle. So if you want to get it, get mm -hmm. it, get it now. Um, as soon as you buy it, you'll get an email from, um, send owl. It might go to your junk email. So you need to look in your junk or spam email folder for it. And then it gives you a link to go to the website excuse me, um, to download the content. So it's less than half a gigabyte um, to download. So you should have room on your computer. I have it on my iPad. Um, I, I would have to agree with a lot of people who tell me that they don't like eBooks. And I have in the past not been a fan of eBooks, but now that I have an iPad and I have them on my iPad, Yes, <laughs> each each little individual book is on there. I can go and select um, a different course, a different mm -hmm. cookbook and have it come up and then find the recipe. I love having it on my iPad. You can put it on your smartphone. You can put it on your laptop. We do recommend that you put it in more than one place. That's why you get to have 10 downloads so that you can put it on different devices. Mm -hmm. You may even want to um, save it on a jump drive so yeah, that you have it. Enough. Yeah. that I mean, that mm -hmm. just makes sense to do that. That way, if your computer crashes, your iPad gets stolen, whatever, you will <clears> still have all of that content. And so this is like an absolute steal for $49 to get $8,000 mm -hmm. worth of what I would say is really high quality content. There are some cookbooks in there that are a complete cookbook. Like, oh, yeah. like some of them are 200 pages, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is just phenomenal. Yeah. So um, mine is 117 and it has yeah. over 50 recipes in it. And um, so, I mean, yeah. we just don't. Yeah. Don't I bought a tablet last it. year just for the bundle, just so I could start to cook from my tablet. Yeah. yeah. It is easier. Oh, yeah. Like you can fight the system and try to print everything, but it's easier to just get a tablet and you pull it open. <laughs> yeah, you, yes, because, Are you becoming a um, well, I, I still love a, a printed, um, book because I, I read cookbooks like people read novels, right? Because I, know, I, I know. because I love to cook. So I like to be able to just scroll, you know, scan through rather than, you know, flip the pages and look mm -hmm. and, and, you know, put little tabs on things. So I still do love a printed book, but because I like so many different recipes from different books in the um, bundle, I can't print them all. Um, and so having them on the, on the iPad is simple and easy. And I've gotten used to, you know, just find it in there, tap on it, open it up, you know, mm -hmm we got to roll with the times. <laughs> you do. You do. I know I am old and I like, even in the hospital, like everything slowly started to become digitized and I fought it, but you know, like at some point you just have to surrender and it's, it is a lot easier and you can get a ton more information, especially, especially with cookbooks and you can get these like, I, I don't have it on now, but like this can prop up too. Like I can set it mm -hmm. up like this and have 
but like on a little, it's got a little stand and then I can just scroll through the recipes, but um, yeah, it's so much easier and you just have so much information in the bundle. So I highly recommend that you get it. Even, even if you're a technophobe, you can figure it out, get a grandkid Absolutely. to help you. Yep. yep. And even if you only use three or four of the items that are in the book, you will, it will have paid that are in the bundle. It will have paid for itself. Mm -hmm. um, because like you said, you know, um, some things are over a hundred worth over a hundred dollars. Some things mm -hmm. are in the 20 to $40 range. So even if you just, yeah. if, you know, if you used Stephanie's program yeah. in my book, you'd be money ahead. And you can also get it as a gift. I did this last year for my like daughter-in-law, but um, you can, whoever you want to gift it to, you can just enter their email address and then you pay for it. And then just tell them like, you know, like happy Easter or whatever, and it'll go right to them. But this is, I mean, I've had, like, I have a bunch of um, like clients or people that I've been working with and they have loved ones and um, they're, they're buying this up left and right, because it's, if, if you're new to a plant-based diet, this, this is, this is all you need, basically. <laughs> I mean, like, $49. And a lot of these doctor's classes, like they'll be $297 or, you know, like getting like that gut health information and yeah. uh, like Dr. Furman's, I think it's like an immune boosting class. Oh, and then Dr. Laurie Marbase has a course. She teamed up with Brittany Giroudi and it is all of the labs that you need. Uh, if you're following a plant-based diet, the annual labs that you should get. And this is the, like a lot of people just don't have, I mean, have to act, we don't live in California. We don't have a plant based doctor. Right. And so, and, and most people really love their family practice doctor, but they switch to a plant-based diet. Their doctor's not going to know, you know, like about issues with, you know, iodine and, uh, like other, like, you know, CRP levels like that. These are the things that we want to check. Um, and Dr. Marbase has an entire course explaining all the different labs so that you can, and when you go to your doctor, you know, like most doctors aren't going to know much about a whole food plant-based diet, but if you come in and you're informed and you say, I need to get these labs checked, doctors will listen to you and they will order the labs that um, you've you know, like done research on. So you can just come armed with that knowledge. And, and in my course too, I spell out the labs that you need to get, like, especially like pre and post so we can measure progress as you're transitioning over. So, yeah. yeah and I also liked in her course that she tells you, you know, what your results are, what things are going to mean. What is it going to mean right. if it says this, this, and this? And so I think that's very helpful too, um, because we do have to educate our doctors. We live in California, but we don't have a plant-based doctor. We don't, there isn't one oh, yeah. um, here <laughs> where we live. And so, yeah. um, you know, there was yeah, a and couple honestly, of- honestly, when you switch to a plant-based diet, like all your health issues, like you don't really hardly ever need to go to a doctor, but once you've been plant-based for, and I will say like, you know, like for a couple of years, you do need to, you need to be really up on like checking that B12 level. Um, there are, there are some levels that you really need to stay on top of and, um, a plant-based informed physician, like it, sometimes like I have, I have done consults, love that life telehealth is all plant-based physicians. And I've gone to them because like, once you get to where you are plant-based, but you might have like one little issue, like you are at the end of medical science. Like no one knows what to do if you're eating like a flawlessly, perfectly healthy diet. So that's what uh, plant-based physicians do is specialize in caring for this tiny subset of the American population that is really crazy healthy. But, um, but sometimes there's some little tweaks that we, we do need to do uh, under a physician's direction. And, and that's really useful to get that information. And then you can integrate that with your family practice doctor. And in my, in my like physician references to in my, uh, the, the introductory part of my course, um, I have a bunch of references from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine for your regular physician. So they know how to take care of a whole food plant-based patient. So Perfect. yeah, that's really wonderful, useful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. This has been so much fun. Good to see you again. Thank yeah, you it's good to see you again.
It was great. And um, if you want to get the bundle, the link will be um, below the video in the notes. So thanks for right. watching, everybody. We really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Stephanie, for sharing. We'll you betcha. Hopefully see you next year. For I the know. Bundle. We sure will. All right. All right. Peace, love, and plants, everyone. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching today. We really appreciate it. If you have any questions about the bundle, um, we're happy to stay on a couple minutes and answer them. Karen says um, that Dr. Marbus is one of her doctors now. That's so amazing. And with the telehealth, you can absolutely positively get a plant-based doctor that will have Zoom calls or phone calls with you. So you don't necessarily have to move and live someplace where you can um, get that kind of medical care. Because I think that was one of the good things that came out of the pandemic is the fact that we learned that um, telehealth really, truly can work.